If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already. And with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 213 of the Career Mode Road to Glory. This is the final episode of this season and as such the final episode of this series for FIFA 15. We end with a squad report etc and a season roundup for the 8th season. The season in which we were victorious in the Barclays Premier League. 26 wins, 7 draws, 5 defeats, winning the title by 3 points from Chelsea. 84 goals scored, 39 conceded. Goal difference was very close between ourselves and Chelsea as well. If that extra uh, defeat that they got had been a win, you might argue that they would have actually won the league on goal difference ahead of us. But we were able to get the points we needed in the final episode, either earlier on today or yesterday. Not sure when that video will have gone up, actually. There's been plenty of videos going up, like four or five or six a day over the past couple of days. Sunderland, QPR and Fulham, though, unfortunately get relegated for them. Uh, but Or unfortunately for them, get relegated. But uh, Chelsea, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man United round out the top four. Arsenal having to settle for fifth rather than that uh, that fourth spot that they cherish so much, finishing there on goal difference alone. So uh, United will have Champions League football. City only in sixth, so you would presume the City manager has been swiftly sacked. But uh, we'll have a quick look and see how uh, we got on when it comes to player stats. And our very own Strahil Georgiev gets the golden boot for the BPL. 26 goals in the uh, season as a whole. Six ahead of Danny Welbeck. 11 ahead of Quirker and then Yusuf Palsen's there on 14. He, of course, has uh, missed a few games through to injury or a lack of fitness. Nobody else from us involved in the rest, though. But uh, James Ward-Prowse and Tony Kroos there, as well as George Ev as well on 7. Palsen and Mane on 6. Loads of Cambridge United players here involved in uh, the top assists as well. We've, we scored a lot of goals, as you saw. Clean sheet-wise, uh, obviously, we brought in David De Gea halfway through the season. And uh, he would have gotten some clean sheets from Man United and some for us. And uh, Marcus Hutchinson there, who was our goalkeeper prior to David De Gea, getting six as well. Don't think uh, Areola will be on the list. He's not. But uh, delighted with that. Really thrilled to get the golden boot as well as uh, winning the BPL title as well. We'll have a quick look at the other big leagues around Europe and then we'll end with a final squad report so you can see how the championship winning squad ended up. But uh, we'll see who came up. West Ham and Wolves tie with 103 points each. Madness. But uh, Leeds United finished third. One of Leeds, Forest, Birmingham and Wolves will come up via the playoffs. Uh, going down are Sheffield United, Peterborough and Shrewsbury. Suck on that, Peterborough fans. Uh, going up from League One, a Coventry and Charlton, and will be joined by Millwall, Bournemouth, Notts County, or MK Dons. Going down are Scunthorpe, Gillingham, Port Vale, and Hartlepool. And going up from League Two, Leighton Orient on 100 points win the league. Blackpool go up as well, as do Tranmere in the third automatic promotion spot. And then one of Oxford, Bradford, Mansfield, or Chesterfield will be joining them in League One next season, although obviously we won't be playing. And Northampton and York City end up going down into North non-league football and I wanted to have a look at the other big leagues around Europe so we will keep scrolling through obviously it's uh, been a tight run thing in the Barcelona series for well, actually no it wasn't a tight run thing in the Barcelona series for the the championship it wasn't tight in France either 92 points to 80 Marseille win the league ahead of PSG Lyon third in Germany Bayern Munich win the league by three points ahead of Wolfsburg who are th further three points ahead of Dortmund and then Schalke 10 points behind them Roma win the Scudetto two points ahead of Inter one point ahead of Juve and then Milan there in fourth and we will have a quick look at, uh, at Spain as well, PSV winning the Eredivisie, Porto winning the Liga Portuguesa, CSKA Moscow winning in Russia, Celtic winning the SPL and Barca win by 13 points in La Liga. So pretty similar to how we did, although we lost more than one game in uh, the entirety of the season. 30 wins out of 38 games is mental. Seven draws and one defeat all season. Close to the uh, Invincibles, but not to be for Barcelona, unfortunately. The one defeat, but they do get the title. So uh, I'm not... Let's actually do it this way. Have a look at fixtures, because if I go into the actual uh, thing for the Europa League and the Champions League, it will actually freeze on me. Man City win the Europa League by two goals to one, so they will at least have some European football next season. And the team who beat us, Barcelona, lose in the Champions League final 2-1 to Bayern Munich. So at least we uh, we don't end up losing to the overall winners. 
they ended up losing as well. So take that. They beat us and then, oh, it would have been on my birthday as well, the 28th of May. That sucks that we didn't get to the Champions League final. Imagine that, winning the Champions League on my birthday as the final game of the entire series. That would have been mad. But anyway, we'll jump in for a final squad report. You may have seen a very interesting stat there whilst we were just on the squad stream, squad screen. But David De Gea came in and uh, we paid 80 million plus Areola for, her, for him. For her, that's weird. For him, and uh, he went up one rating, and he's now valued at 32 million. Incredible signing for David uh, David De Gea. I really enjoy playing with him, actually. Uh, Santiago Arias has gone up too as well. He's come in for the uh, the band Palenge. Obviously, he was able to get himself sent off against Hull City, and I never ended up putting him back in for the final game of the season either. Uh, Santiago Arias there went up once on Stones, up one. Mateo Masasio up one. Jetro Willems didn't grow this season, which is strange. But uh, he had a very good season for us. Really, really good left back. Definitely going to look into him on FIFA 16 as well. Sadio Mane went up 1 to 81 despite being 30 years of age. Four goals, nine assists for him. James Ward Prowse went up 1 as well to, uh, to 80. He was so good for us this season. 10 goals, 14 assists. For a free signing, you couldn't ask for better. Really pleased with how he did this year. Tony Cruz, though, with the interesting one. We have a 90-rated player at Cambridge United. Tony Cruz goes up to, at the age of 32, to 38 and a half million pounds. We paid 18 million plus Gabby Adini. He's now worth 20 million more than he was when we brought him in. Nine goals, nine assists this year incredible signing I'm so glad that he went he was 89 in May and I simmed to July to make sure that all of the other competitions were finished and he's gone up to 90 thrilled that we had a 90 rated player to end the Cambridge United series Timo Werner scored that brilliant goal yesterday against Crystal Palace he went up one as well to 82 Yusuf Palsen up three to 85 he scored 17 and got 10 assists in all competitions Strahil Georgiev up three as well he scored 41 in all competitions and got 12 assists as well that is mental. Join us in 2017. That's five seasons ago, and he's been top scorer every single year since. Incredible stuff. Incredible stuff from Strihel Georgiev. Uh, Daniel Lamate came in, played a few games with me, actually. 18 in total. He was decent. Not the best, not the worst. Pioni Sisto came in. He was really fun to play with, actually. Two goals and five assists for him, but he was very, very good for me. I enjoy playing with him. Faseo Adarabi Yoyo was very good as well. Obviously, he's been at the club for a while this year, or a while, uh, four years this year. Uh, four goals and three assists for him. 16 goals and six assists for Saido Berahino. He came in, in uh, at the beginning of the season. He's been solid for us as well. Really enjoyed playing with him, actually. 97 sprint acceleration, 98 sprint speed. Yes, if Ivaz has been solid for us for a couple of years, four goals, six assists for him. No growth, though, which is weird. Would have hoped that he would grow slightly, but never mind. Cristiano Baraki, he grew as well up to this year. He's incredible. Such a good left back. But uh, he lost his first team spot to Jetro Williams this year. Paul Downing ended up lifting the... Uh, was it Paul Downing? No, it was John Stones. Never mind, ignore me. It was John Stones that ended up lifting the trophy at the end of the last episode. But Paul Downing went up another one. He joined us at the end of the first season. At the end of the first season, we got him on a free from Cheltenham and he's been here ever since, played games each season and gone up to 82 overall. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant player. Really, really enjoyed playing with him. Marco Palenz came in as a free agent in 2018. He's been my number one right back for a while now, up to 80 overall this season. Marcus Hutchinson was first team goalkeeper for a couple of years but uh, lost his starting place to obviously uh, David De Gea. Then we've got some youngsters that are growing, but not not played at all. Uh, this uh, Obadei guy, Matt Obadei, he's actually got potential of 84 to, 90 to, uh, 84 to 94, 84 to 92, but he's going to have to grow loads to achieve that, apparently. Uh, Fabricio Massana, though, growing well nicely. Another kid, Jaden Clark, another kid growing well. Good tackling, though, on him. Nice holding midfielder. Tom Jones, a goalkeeper, 17 years of old, 70 rated again. Same with George Murphy, another youngster, growing well. Very good in the tackle. But none of these kids played for me, unfortunately, this year. Ricardo Kishner, though, did play for me. He's up three overall. Now at 82, he was 81. Now he's 82, another player that's jumped up in July as well. He came in on a free eight goals, six assists from him this season. Quezzi was able to get nine and five. We obviously had him at the start of the season was the sole reason he and Tom Elliott were the sole reasons why we were able to get up the league so quickly we sold him on to free up cash we brought him back in as a sign of courtesy and he came and scored the winning goals for us in the Europa League final last year and uh, clearly had an impact to play this year as well so pleased with that and then a couple of youngsters that were also out on loan that did okay this season but that 
is going to bring this season and this series to a close. I can't thank you enough for the immense support you guys have shown this series from start to finish. Like I've said previously, it wasn't the most popular when it first started, but it's grown in popularity throughout the year. I know you guys are keen for me to do a Road to Glory in FIFA 16, and I will do. I just won't be starting with a Road to Glory. Obviously, we're starting with Chelsea and Wolfsburg and a My Player, and then once the Wolfsburg career mode is finished, that slot will be taken up by the Road to Glory again. Probably not with Cambridge, probably with another side, but because I'm planning to do Cambridge on FM 16 instead of FIFA, rather than than, uh, than FIFA this time around, so we'll have to wait and see for that. That gets released on November the 13th, but there will be a Road to Glory series in FIFA 16, don't worry, but that won't start until a couple of months in. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed not only this video, but the series as a whole. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.